Hello once again YouTube, Chris that I bring here bringing you some world painter action. Now uh, as you can see this is something I really haven't done before is I actually get into world painter and show you how I make maps and stuff. If you haven't already uh, seen the trailer for the uh, Lands of Saildor or Realms of Saildor uh, server that I did, uh, I'd highly suggest you go check that out. I'll provide a link fucking on your screen right now. Maybe there will be an explosion. I'll see what I can do. Um, <laughs> and you can check that out, and I really would uh, advise you to check it out because it pertains to what I'm going to be doing in this map um, and this uh, this video and the series that I'm going to be turning this video into, hopefully. Um, basically, after I completed the Realms of Saildor map, uh, I actually got a chance to walk around my map. Um, I did export it in sections at a time to see if things worked out uh, with like the landscape and stuff in the past, but I only did it on a small scale. I only did it for set areas that I was building or working on at the time. But you know, now that the server has the map and I can explore with the, the server uh, and staff uh, and stuff, I can actually see just how amazing that map came out. And I, I was blown away because I didn't think my map was going to come out that great. Um, maybe that's just an artist thing because I, I go to school for art and shit and, you know, that's important to me. But, um, like, I, I, I follow people that do maps like this and I follow people that have, like, you know, posted stuff like this before and I just look at their stuff and I'm like, wow, my stuff doesn't look like that. But I actually got in the map, uh, and on the server and it looked amazing. Um, so as you can see here, I have, like, this random little island uh, you may be uh, thinking, what the hell is this video about? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, basically, after I got that map done and uh, everyone loved it, I figured, why not do more? Um, I w had just like a massive boost in my, my creative thought process after I made that map um, and explored it. And I really wanted to exploit that before it, like, it all drained out of my system. Um, basically, I want to create... A series that not only does tutorials on how to use World Painter and how I use World Painter to create my maps, but I want that series to like extend into a let's build um, with like perhaps time lapse builds and cinematics. I don't exactly know how well that would work. I have done time lapses on Feed the Beast, so I don't really think it should be a problem with Minecraft. I just don't know how well it will work in the end. Um, but that's the plan essentially uh, for what I'm going to be doing here. So this is going to be a very weird series. It's going to be a tutorial series and a let's build um, and uh, just me talking to you on how I'm creating this map. Um, I'd like to start off by saying uh, the first thing that we're going to be creating uh, is the Island of Pike um, from Game of Thrones. If you don't watch Game of Thrones, um, basically it's a seafaring uh, people's island or uh you know it's a group of islands but one of them is named pike and the reason um it's so cool is because it has this castle on the island this is uh the actual castle called pike on pike island um it's basically the the ha the the seat of the great house of the greyjoys which basically rule over these islands um house Greyjoy and all whatnot uh they have like a kraken on their flag which is fucking cool so i wanted to make this and i didn't want to stop with just the terrain i i wanted to make the actual build itself of this castle so i fiddled around real quick and i did some tests just to see uh, if i could get the scale of it right and there you can see i'm starting to build up just you know a little bit of the terrain for this castle now you may notice that um yeah, as long as it doesn't lag horrifically. There's a lot more to this island than just that. And that's because uh, there is more to the island in the, um, the, the books and the TV show adaption. Um, there's a lot more to this island pike here. Um, so, oh god, did I just stop my recording? No, it didn't. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I had issues recording uh, with my two screens on at the same time, so now I only am recording with one screen. But, um, Essentially, uh, that's what I wanted to make, and I I want it to be really fucking cool. I want it to be something that nobody's ever seen before. Um, I, I just want to say something ahead of time. Uh, one would be the fact that recently I've seen an influx, well not an influx, but a shift in how people go about making their maps. If uh, any of you, I'm going to say fucking names here, I don't really care. Um, it's not. I don't expect these people to watch my videos, but if you watch Jamsy Boy... Um, 
he has recently started using a program called World Machine to generate his maps for Minecraft. Um, I have no problem with, you know, somebody using a program to, you know, create awesome landscape because essentially that's what world painter does uh, i just have a preference over world painter because i i would rather have complete control over the terrain i make uh, the benefits that world machine brings to the table like erosion can it be just as easily created in world painter if you know how um, it may not be like 100% accurate or 100% consistent but to be honest i don't think players notice that type of thing I mean, they may know that it looks really good, but they don't know... Sometimes people just don't know why things look good. Um, and, you know, that's just something the fucking art students even have a concept, gra a hard time grasping. Sometimes you just don't know why things look good, but they do look good. And I don't think players are going to really care for the little details of how the landscape was eroded. Um, and that's, you know, basically the only benefit I really see with World Machine. Um, it gives you realistic rivers and landscapes and stuff like that. Um, Jamsy Boy, he, he, his maps um, are personally scaled down far too much for me. And I don't know if that's a limitation on World Machine's part or World Painter's part or if he just prefers it that way. But I like larger and more, you know, insane landscapes. Um, I don't I don't really deal well with, you know, um, small scale and the rivers he makes are very small uh, also. So I'm, I, I like bigger things. Um, and this is going to be a little bit bigger uh, than probably something he would make if he was making the same thing. Um, I don't want to compare myself too much to Jamsey because this is a very different thing than what he's doing, hopefully. Uh, but I mean, I do think that I am on a map making level comparable to him. Uh, and, you know, he's like the only other person I see doing this stuff. So, uh, I mean, if you want, want to point out some other people for me, go right ahead. Um, I'll take a look at some of the stuff they've done and see if they can, you know, uh, show me some tips and tricks that I haven't learned yet. Um, but the second reason I'm not using World Machine to do this is because World Machine actually costs money. It costs $100 at least before you can use this program commercially for your you know anything really um and even more so if you use the machine to generate landscape for a game of course i'm not doing that but that's just a little bit too much for me um and i can't fucking deal with that uh <laughs> so i won't be using world machine i will be sticking strictly to world painter and uh it'll it'll turn out just as good um i, I promise you that so the first thing uh, I'd like to say is that this tutorial is, or this tutorial series is going to um, be relatively uh, short. Oh, I didn't mean to open a new file. I made, I want to make a new file. No. Okay, so yeah, this the episodes in this series are going to be short. Um, probably because I'm going to speed up quite a bit of it if it takes too long. I shouldn't have to speed up too much with this because it's a really small island. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, there's two other major towns that I plan on building in this build um, when it's all done, other than the castle. Um, a castle on its own is a decent sized build, but building the two other towns should add a little bit of something to the build and, you know, help make this a more, uh, you know, valuable map download for you in the future. So I hope you get to um, be able to, you know, experience that with me as I create it and shit. Anyway, um, I'm only going to do simple tutorial segments for this i'm only you know going to like show you how to do an ocean in one episode and cliffs and mountains in the next episode uh those cliffs and mountains may tie in specifically for my map only um they may not have anything to do with um, a mountain tutorial that i do in the future you may get totally different mountains in the future with a different build that i do because i, I plan on making this uh a multiple map series i plan on doing more than one map with this um so let's call this pike map okay so we have that i'm using four by four kilometers roughly um of space and the island is going to be three kilometers roughly across so it'll give you a kilometer of ocean on each side that's a pretty decent map size and there's not going to be a lot of land um, that's going to be used, but I think that's an, it's important to put a lot of space between areas. You don't fucking have towns like two minutes walk from each other. Um, if you can put towns 
like on the other side of harsh terrain so that the harsh terrain is in between it i guess that helps um but for the most part we don't have to really worry about that this island is just stony and stuff um and you'll be seeing me create that stuff uh, as we go along so this is just an introduction uh video to get you into world painter if you have not touched world painter before um i don't expect you to copy my map like block for block but i expect you to like you know at least pick up on what everything does this is the create new world screen obviously um i'm putting in the dimensions which determines its width and height uh, on the screen um you can choose circular world if you want you can also choose the height of the map the default is 256 because that's what minecraft defaults to i'm going to make the ocean flat and i'm going to lower it to 30. and the reason i'm doing that is because on the edges of the map, you want the map to kind of blend in as best as you can so people can't really tell where the map flows into a Minecraft map uh, because as you walk past this map, Minecraft will start generating terrain. Um, so around 30 blocks high for the ground is how high Minecraft generates underwater uh, ground. Uh, it's not, you know, going to be perfect because it's going to be, you know, randomly generated. So it's not going to match your terrain, but um, it gets it close enough. Uh, and it's also better to start off with an ocean map instead of lowering everything else so that it's underwater. Um, so, you know, it just makes it simpler. Uh, water level is at 62, and that's just the default for Minecraft. We can make it lava if we want. We can add beaches if we want. I'm not going to be doing that. The entire surface material uh, is currently grass. I'm going to be changing it to, uh, let's see, do I want to change it to sand? Um, I'm pretty sure the underside of oceans in Minecraft, the dirt is, uh, dirt. Um, so I'm just going to turn it to dirt. I have no problem with that. Um, and frankly, I don't think really anyone cares about what the underside of the ocean that the ocean floor is made out of. Um, we're going to be using custom biomes. I don't have to worry about extended block IDs, and we're going to be using an ocean seed for Minecraft. This is just to make sure that um, a huge ocean will spawn around the ocean or, or around the o origin of the map, um, and that if your map is small enough, uh, it'll extend that ocean far past the uh, the edges of what you create in World Painter. Um, you can, you know throw this around it's i guess these are all like predetermined ocean biomes um so whatever i'm gonna create the map now i apologize for any lag spikes and stuff uh and like i said this is just an introductory tutorial i'm gonna be showing you what some of these brushes do and the ones that i'll be using uh here you can see how big the map is that's four kilometers across if you can see the um, the big square, obviously, uh, that's 300, no, that's 600 blocks across that square. So that's 600 by 600 square, uh, the dotted line that you see on this, uh, the map over my cursor. That's um, the size of my brush. So that's about uh, how big this map is. Gives you a little bit of perspective before we've really gotten into it. I'm gonna see if I could zoom back in real quick. Uh, that red dot in the center, that's a spawn. That's where we'll be when we get jumped into this map in Minecraft. So over here you have layers. We're not going to really focus on these right now. I'm just going to point them out that these are basically, you know, different types of things you can add to the map, such as caverns, chasms, different types of forests, a swamp biome with pre-generated trees, a jungle biome with pre-generated trees. You can use void to make sure that to make the map have just like a section of nothingness. Like if I wanted to paint this on, all of those blocks are now missing from the bottom of the map to the top of the map and it, you will literally fall into the void i obviously don't want that so i'm going to zoom out you can add resources which is like the underground minerals and ore and coal and dirt and lava and water uh, you can also use populate we will never use populate i'm telling you right now um i could use populate i just rather not um and that's about it. Um, up here you have all the different types of tools. Uh, basically, um, tools can be used with brushes. Layers can be used with brushes. Terrain and custom terrain are used with brushes. And over here is the brush shape. Um, tools don't always use a brush shape. Just putting that out there right now. Um, you have the flood tool, which floods an area up to a certain block height with either water or lava. 
You have Smooth Tool, which smooths everything out. Very useful tool, we'll be using that. Uh, flatten Tool, we'll be using. And the Raise or Lower Terrain Tool, we will be using. Uh, we probably won't be using anything else uh, other than these three right here, actually. Um, you can, if you want, to use Mountains. The only issue with that is... Uh, it doesn't really work with custom brushes. You kind of have to use the brushes that they provide you. Uh, over here, you can see that there's regular brushes and then there's custom brushes. Uh, the brush settings over here obviously determined how these brushes are applied to the map. Things like how intense the brush is, which basically, I guess, equates to pressure. Um, if you were using like a Photoshop program, uh, intensity kind of just relates to how hard the brush is being pressed into the landscape um, to create what you want. You can set it to only work at certain heights for the brush. That's useful for creating things like snow-capped mountains and stuff. Uh, you can have it only work on land or water or a specific block or a specific layer, which are over here. You can add custom layers, by the way, and it will add those layers to this little um, box over here so you can uh, click on those layers that's pretty useful uh, and if you're using like custom layers and you need to make sure that your custom layers have certain uh, biome or something um, you can also to tell it not to work on all of those things um, and you can also tell it to work on certain degrees and that is probably the most important part when it comes to creating terrain um, we will definitely be checking that out in the future uh, so for the most part that's all i'm going to be covering right now uh i know i didn't actually get to creating the tutorial yet and this is just an introduction to what the idea is the plans are for this series i hope you stay tuned i'm going to try and output this thing as fast as i can because this is actually going to go a lot faster than uh any other series i think that you may have seen in this stuff i mean i know some i know jamsy boy makes a tutorial for world painter but he does the tutorial in one episode um and he often speeds up the build uh for the map but i would rather talk to you guys and tell you why i'm doing things and how i do things instead of making a tutorial after the fact um i would rather talk you through how i created this map so for now, that's it. In the next episode, we'll be going over how to randomize the ocean and uh, how to create the coastline and get the f initial land mass up. It's not going to be a very long episode. Like I said, these are going to be quick tutorials, but they're going to carry you through the process of creating a map. And you're only going to have to watch like five minutes of a tutorial in order to understand what I'm talking about. I don't want to throw an entire map worth of information at you at once. I'd rather you get it in nice little chunks. So. I, uh, like I said, hope you enjoyed uh, and look forward to what I have uh, coming for you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll continue this in the next episode. So click the link at the end of the video to watch that next episode. Comment, rate, favorite, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this idea. And uh, honestly, if you have any um, things that you would like me to build uh, in future maps that I do, um, Go ahead and suggest them. I can't tell you that I'll build them because I kind of have to know the source material uh, before I jump into a build. But um, you can certainly suggest them. So go ahead and suggest things from Game of Thrones. I've already had people suggest things to me. I just want to know what you guys think of what I should do after this entire thing is over. Because Pike is definitely going to be the first one I finish. And uh, yeah. So I'll see you guys later. Have a nice day.